the underlying document is a Geneva communique, which talks about transition, which most people understand as a, a movement to a new leadership. How do you understand it? Uh, I think what we understand is to take it uh, step by step. The first article in Geneva 1 is to stop violence by all parties, uh, to end uh, all fighting in Syria. Uh, and then even when you talk about a transitional uh, body or whatever, this has to be decided by the Syrians. And even President Obama in his speech at the UN, he said, the decision is for the Syrian people. This should be subject to discussion. Whatever the Syrians agree to should be fine, but with no foreign or regional interference in the will of the Syrian people. The opposition want, say they want to know that President Assad will go at some point. Is that something the Syrian government is willing to offer? And when I use opposition leads, I like to say oppositions. So I would like to ask which opposition. I think Saudi Faisal yesterday was speaking of, about an opposition that Saudi Arabia and the U.S. created. There are other countries who created other oppositions. So the measure, the criteria for us is the interest of Syria and the interest of the Syrian people. And to meet with, with no precondition and the... President Assad to go or to stay is a decision of the Syrian people. But if some Syrians continue to insist that the, it must be clear that at some point, at some point in the transition, President Assad will go, is this something that the government is willing to commit to, to get the process started, to get the talk started? Well, uh, President Assad said many times that uh, the only way he would, hand, he would deal with this is through the will of the Syrian people, through elections or through you know, the ballot box or through referendum. So I don't know why when the West speaks about its own democracy speaks about elections. When they speak about Syria, they want to decide in Geneva and on behalf of the Syrian people what the Syrian people want. What we would like to do is to uh, end this crisis, this violence uh, uh, in Syria, and then to allow the Syrian people to express uh, their will and to decide the future of Syria. That's what we hope to achieve. If you are calling and President Assad has called for an end to support to the opposition, what about the military financial support that the Syrian government gets from outside? Well, um, we, didn't get, we didn't need uh, that help uh, from outside. And I, know, I don't know what help uh, are we having from outside. If we well, we hear the sound uh, of shelling here. As I know, if we didn't have uh, this horrid uh, crisis that has been created, really, by uh, external forces. And uh, so, so once you stop the violence, once you stop the, the armament uh, into Syria, I think everything else would take its course easily. So, so the government would be willing to do what it's asking the opposition to do, stop its external support? It, there's not a single We've opposition. seen military. That's I, the yes. problem. No, but for the government, because I have seen myself Hezbollah fighters on the ground helping the Syrian army. Would that have to stop as well? Uh, well, I, I don't think the Syrian army would be fighting anybody. Once you, you, you get the armed gangs out, that the Syrian army would not be there on the ground, would be back to its original job. That's what we wanted to do. Does the Syrian government understand that to make peace there has to be compromises in order to share power? I think this, is, this would be left to the Syrian people to, de to discuss and to decide. You know, I don't think the issue is about power now. I think the issue is about saving the country and saving the Syrian people. That's, that's the utmost priority. Power comes next.